how you linked up with Tommy O'Cook and ended up in his band? I was at home one evening, sit after, after, no, this is long after music lesson, no. Music lesson was like mm, 13, 14, 15, six, somewhere in there. And then this, by this time I was about 19 years of age, I'm sitting inside my dear little mother and myself, poor little thing after I'm put her through so much expense of tearing up the four book them. Lord, and somebody was knocking at the gate, so she went out and she came back and said, Tom Cook is at the gate. Somebody said, yes, yeah, sure, ha, ha, ha. Which Tom Cook is this? And she said, then why don't you go and look? So I went out and look, and it was the great Tom Cook from the Scatterlights. By this time, Scatterlights broke up. And Roland had fans so went his ways and formed Soul Brothers mm -hmm. and stick with Coxon. Tom O'Cook was, Tom O'Cook went the other way and formed the Supersonics. Mm -hmm. So he was looking, I was the last person to join the band, the bass player. Johnny Moore, the trumpeter, Lester Serling, the saxophonist, went with him. Um, he was there as a saxophonist also. He had a keyboard player and guitarist, and Lloyd Nibs, the scatterized drummer, went to the bar, so, so they, they just wanted a bass player, no? Can you imagine me at 19 years of age, 20, and Tom and McCook come up to your gate and say he's forming a band, and would you like to be the bass player? Is the sun shining? And I say, yes, of course, and I um, say, all right. We have an rehearsal at Club Havana tomorrow at 2. Please be there. Well, me don't remember sleeping that night, you know. We woke up before a day. And I was at Club Havana by about 11, 12 o'clock for this 2 o'clock rehearsal. And man, we rehearsed all day. The rehearsal finished like about 5, 6. And you know what made my day? By this time, you know, Scatterlight was my, I did just love Scatterlights because of Brevet mm -hmm. and the music, you know, Tommy and Roland. I didn't listen to no Barry Lee and Carlos Moore. I listened to them and, and Kelsey, yes, but my heart was with Scatterlight. And I knew every one of Scatterlight's recording both instrumental and songs that they back at other artists with. And we start rehearse and rehearse all day. And when the rehearsal finished, you know, Tommy came over to me and said, Boy, if I don't if I didn't know better, or if I wasn't looking, or if I didn't know it was you, I would believe that Brewett is there playing. Man, that evening me forget everything about busting a walk more ago, you know. <laughs> of the guitar. Can you imagine Tom I could tell you that at 19 years of age? But Mark, you know, I knew it note for note and every one of them scatterlight songs. Yeah man. And there was this great big song, Scatterlights did an instrumental. And there's a big mistake in another song by Brevet. Mistake, big, blatant. But you say in recording, even me too, in my recording days, me, just, me, me have some songs, uh, some deadly mistake nature, but guess what now? You see, when you're recording, the first record, the first cut of the song is nine times out of ten the best cut, you know. And then when you do that, it's hell to get the second cut and the third cut. We spend all day sometimes trying to get by the feel at, at what was recorded first. And we have to just, the producer say, no man, or the engineer, are we? We say, no man, that are the cut. By this time, mistake like nothing, you know, but it feel nice. So that particular song, Man, 
a mistake, blatant. And I remember when we were going, when we were rehearsing the song, you know, and, and Tommy counted it off, and we start. I played the mistake, you know. Mind well, you know, so the whole place stayed on the ground. The place mashed up. They played because them know his mistake, you know. Me know his mistake too. But it fit. It fit. Tommy laughed, Tommy, the whole band, all light names, everybody up on the ground and roll, you know. And then, you know what, what, what compound this you now? One night we were playing in Ocho Rios. Supersonics was playing at, I forget what the club name. Uh, and, and Roland Alfonso band was like about less than a mile up the road. But the same Ocho Rios trip, you know. I will flap them, man. Yes. So we are, we are, play, where we then are the two ocherists and the place car you know, full. So at about 11 o'clock, so that must show you how, how, how early them tongue long ago, the place flop. But because at about 11 o'clock, I am there playing and we are playing. And boy, I don't know if it's coincidence or bad luck or what. Just as Tommy called the song that have the mistake by Brevet. Who walked through the door? Roland Alfonso, Jackie Mitu, and Light Brevet. So when the song, we start the song, and of course we play the mistake, man. Well, you know, Brevet comes straight up to me, you know. And he's, he has a very intimidating posture, you know. I forgot. I'm not, you know, you know but. And him coming, same like when we walk up to him at the rehearsal and we know that touch, him walk come right up to the bandstand and say, Who you? Some, some may try to decide you know, if we must, must run or what? Some say, some say, him, Jackie Jackson. And him say, I show you, I try to show me up. Some may try to figure out now what I mean. And then out of the corner of my eye, I see Johnny Moore, Tom McCook, Lester Sterling, Light Dibs. The, by this time, all the song tumble on the ground in the back and stop playing when Brevet come up, you know. Everybody up on the ground, and la when he said, I drive the show, because they know someone played a mistake. But in Mark, he wasn't vexed, and vexing did vex, and nothing, you know. But by this, the only reason why I'm not running, you know, is because when I look, I say, Tommy and Johnny Moore and Light and everybody I laugh and I hold the bill and I roll. So I say, oh, well, I'm not serious. I'm not going to do me nothing. So that was my second encounter with my little mentor, Light Brevet. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, low. it was frightening to start, but all's, all, what is it? What is it? All's, all is well at ends well. <laughs> Remind Brevet? Yeah. No, Mickey, no. Okay, you know that doesn't. No, we, Maggie, we were in no pals who was a brethren. Yeah. I, I see my name, see me. This is me, no. So, we didn't talk about it. When the Scatterlights broke up, why did some musicians stay with Tommy and others go with Rolla and Alfonso? Well, I, I would imagine that is choice, you know. And for some reason, you know, nobody know why, but the scatterlights, they could not agree on anything. They always vex for the money. There. The band would be up there playing and then the music would lick and a thump and wicked and nobody not talk to nobody. This one vex with that one, that one vex with that and you don't know what them vex for. For no reason. No fighting, thump down vex for them, but them not talking. So when it broke up now, I would imagine that, you see, Jamaicans, Nobody know want to turn Indian, you know. Everybody want to turn Indian chief. So, when it broke up now, Roland just decides, say, I'm going to turn Indian chief now and farm a band. No more scatter lines. So he went and farmed Soul Brothers. And Jackie Mitu went with him. And everybody else went with Tamar Cook. It's just a matter of choice 
who you respect or who you like or whatever. Please speak about the genius of Tommy McCook. Tommy McCook for me, I could get into trouble for saying that. But what opinion come like bottom, you know? Everybody have one, right? Everybody have a body. So that's opinion. Everybody have one. To me, Tom McCook and Roland Fan says it. To the best, I'm not going to say the greatest, to the best saxophonist this world has ever seen. And just listening to them play, they are such an inspiration. Tom McCook is such an inspiration, you know? Like when you're at a rehearsal and, and I can't get something, get the hang of something, he will walk or some other band leader or another person will just stand up there quite contented and make you fight yourself. Tommy would walk come over with his saxophone, whether I'm reading up the part or doing it by ear, and then would say, all right, play it, me, 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 me play it. And he would, that's the making of a great band leader you know, and a person also. And he would play the part, if it given me trouble, he would play the part. And then after him play the part, he would say, come, me, me and you play it now. And would you believe why, before all of that, I was there struggling, fighting with the part. And he said, just the thought of him coming to me and said, come, me, me and you play it. Jesus, that is a great big deal, you know. That is the, that just speaks volume for the, the man as a person and as a band leader and an individual. Yeah, man. For me, when I joined Tamako Band, I was in college. College, man. College. From, I could probably say, I skip, I can't probably say, from elementary, skip high school and go to college with Tamako.